So in a few days, just in a few days, we're going to be at Chag Shavuos here in Kabul, it's the trailer. And our 49 days of preparation will come to a climax. We embarked on this journey 45 days ago, and we're almost there. And Chazal teach us, just like we all remember from the Seder night, we find a similar Mama Chazal and Medrash in every generation. Each and every one of us needs to try to imagine we're standing at the foot of the mountain and together with all the others we cry out, Kol Ashadibe Hashem Nase Venishma. So these are days of preparation and the beginning of the week is Shloishis Yemei. Hagbola, the final three days of preparation. So the shir today is about a topic that is the combination and connection between Torah Shebech and Torah Shebal Very famous mamer of Rabbeinu Saad Yegoin. Ein umaseinu umo elo b'teiroso. Our nation is not a nation only with its Torah, but that is a misquote that everybody quotes, and the Loshan of Rabbeinu Sadi going is, Ein umaseinu umo elo b'toiroiseho, in a plural form, Beloshin Rabim, and I think he means Torah Shebechsav and Torah Shebalpeh. Torah Shebechsav, some others share as well, not the way we do, but what sets us apart and what makes us unique is like the Gemara says in Gittin Dav Samech, like Koras HaKadosh Bochu Bris Im Yisroel, Elo Bishvel Teresh Shabal Peh. Shenemar, al pi advorah me'ele, Korati Im Chobris Ve'eis Yisroel. So today, the Shir deals with the connection between Teresh Shabal Peh and Teresh Shabal Peh. Very famous to resolve. To resolve rights. Even though Chachomim's duty and their obligation is asu siag letoira, ushmartem es mishmarti, asu mishmeres le mishmarto shal toira, but Chazal cannot prohibit anything that the toira explicitly permits. Dover hamefurish betoira leheiter ein biyad Chazal leesor. And the Torah Zohar appears in three different sources. Source number one is the Gemara Sanhedrin. Tanya, Rabbi Eliezer ben Yankov, Oyem Shomat, Yisha Beisin Makin, Von Shin Shaloi Mena Torah. Beisin has the authority to administer punishment even when a Pidin Torah person is not punishable. He doesn't deserve that punishment. But if Beisin thinks there is a need, then Beisin has the authority. שמעתי שבייס נמכן ויון שין שלו עם אין התוירה, ולא לעבור על דברי תוירה, אלא כדי לעשות סייג לתוירה. אני חזל פינג טו, really dramatic and extreme examples. מה זה ביחד של רוחב הרסוס בשעבס? והביאו לבייס נבי סקלו, לא מפני שראו היא לקח, צוני ישבוס, צוני נסר בונון, שעוד צריכה לקח. שוב, מה זה בעוד המייחד שתהיה אחרי זה שתהיה אחרי זה תהיינו? אני גאת מלכס, לא משום שראוי לכך, אלא ששוד צריכה לכך. So the Taz wonders, what do Chazal mean when they say these five words, ולא לעבור על דברי תוירה? מי כמש מלן, ולא לעבור על דברי תוירה? Would anybody think that Chazal have the authority and the right to go against תוירה? So the Taz interpretation is, even when Chachomim are coming to be machmir, not only lahokel, even lachmir, can't go against mashikos of the So let me first say, the pshat of the Taz is a pshat rochoik. Rashi on the spot explains, lo lavor al means, yes, Chazal have the authority to be harsher than Torah's Moshe. But it is only if they are convinced, Shasha 
הצליחו לכך, לעשו סייג לתוירה. But they cannot abuse that power or take advantage or do it lightly. So Rashi says Pshat Valola Voral Divetoire is in the clear context of Makin Vaunshin Shaloy Mena Taira. So Bezin has the authority to give punishment far beyond what the Taira decrees. But they need to do that very carefully. And only lasso is siagle toira. The Taz interpretation is a far broader one. Not only in the context of Makin Vion Shin Shaloy Menadin, but generally, Chazal cannot go against Mashikosa Betoira, even Lachomra. Choshe Mishpat Simen Beis. And in this paragraph in Choshe Mishpat, he doesn't really deal with any halachas, just explaining the Gemara in Sanhedrin. However, he writes, It's interesting why he quotes Yeredeya, and he doesn't quote Orachayim, because the Tazan Orachayim is more barichas than in Yeredeya. So for some reason, I don't see Orachayim in our sheet, but I will tell you what it is. In Tov Kuf Peches, Shochan Och Orachayim, we learn the halacha. Roshon HaShachali is B'Shabbos, there is no Tkiyah Shoifah. Who remembers why there is no Tkiyah Shoifah Roshon HaShachali is B'Shabbos? And why not? Why don't we blow the Shoifah Roshon HaShachali is B'Shabbos? So I'll give you a hint, the same reason we don't read the Megillah. Purim HaShachali is B'Shabbos. If you don't remember, then same reason we don't do anything. Let's not have Zohar Roshon HaShachali is B'Shabbos. I don't have any other example. So why is that? Shema yavirenu dalad ames bereshu sarabim. So the Tura Zov, Tov Kuf Peches, Sif Koten Hei, brings the cash of the Mizrochi. So why don't Chazal prohibit Ki Yeshoi for Bechlal and Rosh Hashanah? Shema Yitak and Kleshia. That's an old Gzeira. Ein Maragdin vein Metapchen vein Menaginim Shema Yitak and Kleshia. So why don't they totally prohibit Ki Yeshoifa on Yom Tov, on Rosh Hashanah? So the Taz writes, Chazal can't say no when the Torah says yes. They could limit, but they can't totally abolish. If the Torah says, Yom Tov, and there's a Mitzvah Shoifa Rosh Hashanah, Chazal don't have the authority, even if they are all the Cheshoshes in the world, the Torah says, blow Shoifa, Chazal can't say don't. But when Chazal say, if Rosh falls in Shabbos, you don't blow Shreva, yes, that is within the realm of their authority because they're not totally going against Torah, just limiting the mitzvah. <laughs> and, the, and in the same way, the Taz explains, Akasha or the Rosh Hashanah mask, so why weren't Chazal Choshe Shem Yavarenoi when Mila Bismana falls in Shabbos and we do the bris? And why ain't we choshish shem yavaren adal adam is bishu sarabim? So the Taz says, because of the Torah says, b'yoy mishim ni yim oil, afilu b'shabes, Chazal can't say, don't. And therefore, Chazal cannot go against ma shem mefurash b'toyer. The Levush was slightly older than the Taz, and the Levush says the same. And the Taz usually quotes the Levush, and it's interesting that he didn't notice that the Levush says the same. Source number three. Li neresh she'en kan kush yeklal, deshane mili shebeferish li pseto ere b'yoy mishmini, afilo b'shabes, v'loi rotsu uchachum emlav oroleo, mishim gzeiro yson, kedei lahamid divreim b'mokem shemitzvah sato ere meferish, l'aso yisa b'shabes. Ma she'en kem b'shoi fev yesek v'ki yoytze ben. שלוי ליפס את תורה בפרש, יהיה משעבס אל הכוס וסתומו, ושעבס אינוי אלו ממילא משמו. What is a bigger pillar to me, I think it's מפורש in שולחן אורך, the sword of the Taz, and that is source number five. כל דובה שעושה מנה תורה, אף על פי שמותו בהנועה, אם הוא דובה מיוחד למחל, אסור לעשות בו סחוירו. חוץ מן החלב, שרי נאמר בו, יוסל לכל מלאכו. 
So the Shohar says, so let me give you a little background regarding sources number five and some others. A little background. There are two different categories of Macholas Asuris. Some Macholas Asuris are Osa Bachila Uba Hanoa. Other Macholas Asuris are only Osa Bachila. Could you help me giving some examples? Which Macholas Asuris are Osa Bachila Uba Hanoa? Which ones? Who remembers? Nevela? Bad guess. Which ones are also Bachila U Bahanoa? Chometz Bepesach. What else? Bosa Bacholov is a Machloikis Tanoam, but we pass can also Bahanoa. Yayanesach. And two other natural. Uh, Fruits? No. Tevel Mutabah, no. Orla and Kile HaKerem. And which ones are Mutabah, Noah? Well, at least two you should know, because you guessed wrong. So which ones are Mutabah, Noah? Nevela, Trefa, all the Mina Matmeim. Camel meat, eagle meat, or all the Mina Matmeim. Lobsters. But even the macholos asuras, the ramuta banoa, asurim b'schayro. And you can't have a business selling shrimp or chas v'sholem pork, even though these macholos asuras are ramuta banoa, asur b'schayro. And there's a machloikis and a shaynim. Is the sisa di uraisa or the rabbonon? And the source of this aloha is Perek Zayin and Mesechet Rumis. It's a Mishnah. And the Gemara says, Nizdamnu lo mutar limkor. Which means, you can't have a business selling macholas asurais. So one of the big problems in the nursing home industry is, if you have a nursing homes anywhere out there in the States, and you can't afford to give kosher food to all the non-Jewish people residing in your homes because kosher food is very expensive. How could you feed them non-kosher food? Would that be considered tzchayra b'macholais asurais? Well, if they're not Jewish, they're, it's permissible for them to eat that food. But isn't that doing tzchayra b'macholais asurais? So the Mishnah says... So a person is a fisherman, not for recreation. He doesn't use the hook and the rod, but rather use nets. He's a fisherman, and he only intends to, ca to catch kosher fish. He catches gefilte fish. That's a kosher fish. But sometimes, you find some shrimp or some catfish or non-kosher fish, he's allowed to sell them because that's a cry. Nizdamnulo mutar. The Esther of Schoira is only having a business selling non-kosher food. But if this is not your business, it's just coincidence. You know, I brought in a net of tuna, and tuna is a kosher fish, but I did find some non-kosher fish. You're allowed to sell them because if it's coincidental, there is no Issa Schoira. So the Shechano writes, we go back to source number five. Kol dove she osa mena toira. Afro pi shemuto ba noa. Imo dove miyuchid lamachal osa lasas boi schoira. What does it mean dove a miyuchid lamachal? You could sell horses because the buyer doesn't intend to slaughter them and eat their meat. Either he wants to buy a racehorse, which costs Fifty million dollars sometimes, or he just wants to ride, you know, or, or he wants a ranch and you know making money, having kids come ride horses. If it's not miyuched lemachal, there is no isel of schoyra, even though it's minim tamayim. So if you sell rabbits for recreation for kids or hamsters for kids to play with them, that's not a isa. It's only if you sell non-kosher species or non-kosher meat 
which is designated for consumption. That's what the Shulchan Aruch means. Emudova miyichad lamachal osel asvoy schoyro. Chutz menachaylev sharei nema boy osel achol malacha. But if it's a schoyro, then it's the rabbanon. Ma bekach shenem yosel achol malacha. Why is this relevant? The pasuk says yosel achol malacha, and therefore there is no issur schoyro. But it's a schoyro, then it's the rabbanon. Isn't this what the Tan says? If the Torah says yosel achol malacha, then Chazal can't answer. So actually, the Taz is, I think it's a Shulchan Aruch. This is what we see from this Shulchan Aruch. Many Achreinim already note that Toysis and Bob Metziah says the same as the Taz. We turn a page, and the question we ask is, what does the Taz mean? Does he mean to say Chachumim can't answer what the Torah is matia? They don't have the authority to prohibit what the Torah permits, or they have the authority to do so, but they don't. For some reason, they decided not to exercise their authority, even though they could. The Taz uses two different lishonos. In Orachaim Tov Kof Peches, he writes, Leirotzu. Yeradei writes, Ein Koyach Biyad Chachomim. Mats Dodim. So if you go back to the Taz and Cheshemish, but source number two, and the Taz gives Pshat and Rebbe Yezah Ben Yankoiv, What's the Habamina? That Chazal could go against Torah's Moshe Rabbeinu. Venerally, so the Taz clearly says, Ein koyach bechachomem leso. They don't have the authority. But let's turn the page and see some other interpretations. Shalas Yitzhubis Michtam Ledovid. Michtam Ledovid was of David Pardo, one of the great Sephardi Gedolim going back almost 400 years. Most well known for a safe on the Tosefta B'Shem Chazdei David. So Rab David Pardo explains the Taz in a very interesting way. Chiluk Zeh, he says, Chachumim can't go all the way against Mitzvah Satoira, but they could limit, they could, uh, on the fringes, and that is why they could aset ki eshoi for Roshon Hashchali es b'Shabes, but they cannot entirely aset ki eshoi for Roshon Hashchali es b'Roshon. Vechiluk Zeh, so the way of David Pardo explains it, Chavruta klapeshemaya miika. Does it make sense that Chachomim should say to a Kodesh Baruch, well, you think it's okay, but we think differently, you know? You think it's mutter, but uh, we, we have a different opinion. If the Torah is mata, how could it be yasa? Lavo irachara. That's not derecheretz. Chavruta klapa shemaya miika. Source number seven, pre toyar. I wanted to ask you does anybody know who wrote the pre toyar? But I realize, Labal oirach chaim. Do you know of any other swarm the Orachaim wrote? I'll be very pleasantly surprised if you do. How many swarm did the Orachaim write? Rishon Litzian. And what is that on? 
It's in Shulchan Orach and some Masechtas. What else? No, I'm not aware. I'm not aware of the Zorachayim Anach. Orachayim Rishon Etzion, obviously Pritoya, one more Sefer. So I'll tell you why nobody knows about this Sefer. He wrote a Sefer, Chefetz Hashem, on Masechtas. Why doesn't anybody know about the Sefer? Because I'm not aware of any other Machaba that ever wrote something that he wrote in the introduction to his Sefer Chefetz Hashem. It's on Masechtas and he writes, I answer for a person that doesn't learn Torah Lishma to look into my Sefer. If you don't learn Torah Lishma, I ask you to look into this Sefer. And he paraphrases a Chazal in a very cynical way. Few sources in Shas we find, Schoyer, Schoyer, Amrin, Lenazira, Lekerem, Lotikrav. When Chazal want to emphasize a su siag letoira, they say, we tell a nausea, don't try to take a shortcut through a vineyard because you might be tempted to eat some grapes. Go around. It'll take you somewhat longer, but we advise, go around. Don't go into the vineyard because you might be nichshal. Amrin lenazira, schor schor. Go around, lekerem lo tikrav. Dorachayim writes, schor schor amrin lechazira, instead of nazira, lekarmi. Kerem Hashem Tzavoy is lo tikrav. Don't dare to come into my kerem. If you're a chazir, very harsh, go around. Don't come into my home. So, I once heard from the Nesiv Sholem in a private conversation, the Slonim Rebbe, that it's a Kabbalah B'yodai that is no longer a Makbid. How would anybody know? How would anybody know? Unless he did a Shalaz Cholim. But I imagine he's right, because the Rechaim up there in Gan Eden probably thinks, what did I do? So for 300 years, nobody's learning this Sefer. I thought there are so many people that learn Torah Lishma. Is nobody learning Torah Lishma? So Remenda Lekotzka, Remenda Lekotzka once said, the Gemara says, Rabbi Gamliel said, Mi she'ein toichu kebarei lo yekones lebeis ha-medrash. And when Rebbe Loza ben Azariah became Nosi, his first decision was, open the gates. Whoever wants to come in is invited. So the Kotzke Rebbe said, what was wrong with Rabbi Gamliel's opinion? Because the real Toichei Kebaris always stayed outside. The real ones. And the ones that came in were always the non Toichei Kebaris. Because if you're Toichei Kebari, you would be the last person to realize that you're Toichei Kebari. So when the Rechaim writes, if you don't learn Torah Lishma, don't look into the Sefer. The real Torah Lishma would never use the Sefer. Because if you learn Torah Lishma, you're probably the last person to realize that you're learning Torah Lishma. So probably, I agree with the Nesiva Sholem that probably after 300 years, everybody could use the Sefer, but... So this is very interesting. So the Orachai Mekodesh wrote, well known for the Orachai Maratoira, which is an amazing sefer, which includes everything, Drush and Kabbalah and Pilpil and Aloha and Lamdas. But his most powerful sefer in Aloha is the Pritoya. So Pritoya Kuf Yud Zayin, the Isser of Schoira. Yesh Lecholodas, the Eleisi, so in this line, he writes, Rachomem can't, they don't have authority, like the Taz. But then he says, Vegam, and also, Kiven Shatoira Shora La Behedia, Lav Oirech Are. Le Misre. Exactly the same language as Rabdovid Pardo. He doesn't quote Rabdovid Pardo, right? Lav Oirecharetz, not Derecharetz. So there are two different Pshotim in the Taz. 
The Taz himself writes, they don't have authority because that is laver al divrei Torah. Nobody could be laver al divrei Torah. And that is the first pshat of the pre Torah. But then he writes, maybe it's just the recheretz. Michtam Ladovid gives another pshat, another reasoning as well. Umagam, the lo mekayim egizrosam, lahamoyin Yisrael. The midishame b'nei kenish the dvorim shebechsav kol adal eposek bekoichad etere siyatu reshay lo amram berpeh lo iken adavar v'mi yachush who vaday lo tzayt elahu umechzek echuk avit lula. So the mikdam ledovet the ledovet part of the rights chachum didn't want to ask what the Torah is mati because who would listen to them? People would say, Are you out of your mind? The Torah is matir and you're going to ask her? And Chachum and Mochoshe, she would have read Kachukavit Lula, and that is why they never asked what the Torah is matir. And that's similar to the Shloim Kluger in source number eight. Slightly different. According to the Michtam Ladovit, Chachum and Mochoshe for their COVID, the Shloim Kluger says, Chachum and Mochoshe for Kavoid at Torah. How could Chachomim say the Torah is Matya, but we think it's also? So we have three different approaches. One is, it's not Derech Eretz. Chavrute klape shmaya mi'ika. Number two, Chachomim were afraid nobody will listen to them. And they're just going to ridicule themselves. V'yu devreim chuke lula. Approach number three, they were choshish lekvoida mokoim boruchu. They were choshish lekvoida Torah. If people will say, the Torah is matir, but Chachomim think, no, it's wrong, it should be also. So according to all these three pshotim, it's not that they can't, but beruach hakoidish, they decided not to. So these are two different pshotim. Shemen roikeach. And it's always a simcha to me to quote the Shem Rekech because he was one of my great, 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 great fathers, grandfathers. And uh, he was an amazing Godel. And he actually wrote the Shev Shemaitza. Who wrote the Shev Shemaitza? Does anybody know? Who wrote the Shev Shemaitza? Yeah, Rabbi Leva Cohen, who is most known for his Ktsay Sechoshin. But the Shem Rekech was a contemporary of the Ktsay Sechoshin, and he also wrote a Shev Shemaitza. To his bad luck, he didn't choose a good name for his Sefer. Because who would know that there's a Shev Shemaitza number two? And I think Shev Shemaitza number two is even more godless than Shev Shemaitza number one. Because Shev Shemaitza number two is a sefer that no one ever wrote anything similar. He has seven prokim, like the Shev Shemaitza of the Ktsois, and the sefer deals with Darke HaTalmud. One perik is Derech HaMakshem. Another perik is Derech HaTarzam. And he went through with Bikius Mavhilo, Unbelievable because developing a system and understanding of dark pilpul shalagamora. Nobody ever did anything like it, and it's an amazing safer. So the Shem Arakech was also a huge tzaddik, and I want to tell you something which is so unbelievable. He was 27 years old when he corresponded with the Noide Be Yehuda was the God Lador. When the Divrei Chaim quotes the Noide Be Yehuda, and what was the Noide Be Yehuda's name? <coughs> you know, after all these years, I'm giving sure you should be historians. <laughs> what was the name of the Noide Be Yehuda? <laughs> A week ago, I asked you who was the Avnaneza, and you said Borenstein. Now I ask you who was the Noide Be Yehuda, you say Landau. No, the Noide Be Yehuda wasn't Landau. What was his name? Rabbi Cheska Landau, who is the Rav in Prague, 
when the Divra Chaim quotes the Noida Beyud, he writes, Godel Achroinim, which is extremely interesting. Godel Achroinim. That's the Torah that the Divra Chaim uses for the Noida Beyud. So the Shemana Kech, his name is the Beloza Leiv, corresponds with the Noida Beyud, and the Noida Beyud gives writes him a title, Neri Yisrael Amoida Yamini Patashachosok. Is that familiar to you? That's what Chazal used on Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai. He was 27 years old. And the Tshuva the Noide Be'yuda writes to him is printed in the Noide Be'yuda and in Shalat Tshuva's Shem and Rokeach. In the Noide Be'yuda it's with those magnificent titles. In the Shem and Rokeach the Tshuva is printed L'chvoid harav v'chuli v'chuli etc. etc. Eloz Aleif. And he cut out all the titles. So let me say this, a personal confession. If I would get a letter with those type of titles from the God Lador, in Shalas Yachuvah's Mecha Sosha, I didn't print any letters I got, only the ones I write. But I think I would be tempted to somehow print that letter in my cipher. I don't know how, but I don't think I would be able, Lamoid Ben Esoyen, I don't think I would be able to withstand the temptation by hook or by crook, to get that letter out somehow. And we only know about that letter because it's printed in the Noide Behuda, and this tzaddik, the Shemen Rekeach, printed the Noide Behuda's letter without any title. And it shows his another. So not only was he a great godel, but an anvesan ushval berech and a tzaddik. So he deals with the question. What about Cherem de Rabbeinu Gershom? Posek Mofurish kisi yenu leish tei noshim achas uhuva vaachas nuo. And Rabbeinu Gershom comes along many years after Chasim as a Talmud. And he says, no, that's not right. And he asks a person to marry two women. And that's totally against a posek. So the Chsam Soifer says, a cherem is not a iso. It's a different concept. <coughs> cherem is like nidui. It's not a iso. Rabbeinu Geshem was aware that he can't answer. But a cherem is a different concept. He's not going against the Torah and he answers what the Torah is. Matthew, but Shem Rakech has a different approach. It's an old print, so it's somewhat difficult to read. The Shem Rakech says, when the reason Chachomim want to ask what the Torah is, Matir, is because things have changed. The world has changed. And they see in their day and age that there is a need for Chizuk, then they have the full authority to do so. So Yankov Avinu had four wives, and they got along. Rome Avinu had two wives. Didn't get along very well. But Rabbeinu Gershom says, Yeridas had And Rabbeinu Gershom looks at the world and his time and he says, this will only bring tragedy and strife and a breakdown of Shalom bias. So the Shem Elakech says, when the reason Chazal want to ask her is not because they're wiser than the Torah, but the world has changed, and people no longer are in such a high madrega, then they have the full authority. Shemi Averenu is not like that? No, I think Shemi Averenu is, he will forget. It's not, it's like any other gzera, any other shavuos. It's not that people have changed, but everybody could forget. So Chachum HaMasad Pasakum, the Torah says, "Al dvarer shaloikid moeschem belechem uvemayim." But that pasuk is actually before Matan Torah, so it's nish behechleach that the Torah is matia. But some achrayim say the same. Pasakam is mishum benoiseim, and we're no longer at such a high level of ruchnius and of tzidkis and chazal were choishish mishum benoiseim. So that would be an exception. So we have discussed today some an interesting topic, and that is the Bavustataz. So as I said at the beginning of today's shir, in another few days is Chagas Shavuos, 
At the beginning of the week is already Shloshis Yemei HaGabola. And many times before Shloshis Yemei HaGabola, I quote the Orachayim in Parshish Yisroi. The Orachayim says in Parshish Yisroi that there is a posik which is a remis to the three most important Yisroidis in Kinyan Torah. V'yisu merafidim. V'yachanu b'midbor, v'yachan sham Yisrael neged ha'ar. Says the Rechaim, number one is v'yisu merafidim. How do Chazal interpret the word refidim? B'malchem es ha'molek, the Pesach says, v'yalochem im Yisrael b'refidim. And the Gemur in Sanedin says, refidim is rofu yedeyem medivrei Torah. There was a lack of yegiyas ha'toyra of Omar. And that is what gave Amalek the koyach, the power to fight Israel. Orachayim says the same with Yisum Rafidim. You need to go away from Rifin Yadayim. Ein at Torah nekneis elo ba'omor. Kachi darkes al Torah. Pas ba melech toich al ma'im b'mesur etish talor etstishan. And many times I said pas ba melech is a relative concept. Every generation has its own pas b'melech. So on the way up to the shir today, the Bochum asked me whether I want to see how Sudas Rishchodesh is in Yeshiva's Torah's Chaim. I just peeked into the kitchen, and I think I saw somewhat more than pas b'melech. So pas b'melech is a relative concept. And I think in our generation, between the pas and the melach, you could have some butter, some cheese, some uh, tuna spread, or some vegetables as well. It still would be considered pas b'melach. Mayim b'mesure tishta. Here and then you could have some orange juice, maybe Coke. Shabbos v'yomte v'shluk of whiskey. It still would be considered Mayim b'mesure tishta. I said Shabbos and Yom Tov. I am extremely disturbed by the knowledge that yeshiva boys like to drink alcohol. When I was a yeshiva bocha, it wouldn't even occur to us to drink at a chasen or at a simcha. Jews always knew that we have yayin lekedusha v'avdalta. And Purim goes without saying. So Mayim B'mesura Tishta is also relative. What is not relative is Ubetoira ato Omer. Ve'im ato oisekein ashrecho b'yoylem hazeh v'toiv l'cho l'yoylem abo. So number one writes to Rechaim, V'yisu merefidim. You can't achieve greatness in Torah only with toil, only if you work hard, only with yegiyah. The pshat of the Chaim is Memidbar metona. Kivin shemesi odom atzmoi kemidbar oleo ha Torah nitenet lo bemetona. That's a Gemara in Erev and Undalid, and once again in Nadorim Nun Hey, and that is a remez for Anova. So this planet, this world, has many types of topography. We have the Great Plains in America. We have the rainforests on the equator. We have the African jungles. And we have the African savanna. And we have the desert. The desert does not sustain life. It's the poorest of all the different types of topography. So v'yachanu b'midbar is a remez for anova. The desert has nothing to offer. Nothing to offer. No Ilan, no Amas Hamayim, the desert, Eretz Tzio Vitzalmoves. So that's a remez for Anova. I like the Gemara says in Tanas Dav Zayin, Torah Nimshel Alamayim. Mayim, Manichem Mokom Gavoya V'yodem Lamokom Namoch, Ein Divre Torah Meskayim En Elo B'Mishe Dato Yishfeilo. And finally, Vayichin Sham Yisrael, Ki Yishechod O'Balevechod, that is, Dibuk Chaveirim Bepilpul HaTalmidim. So these are the three fundamentals. Rabchanina says, Habe lamadati merabaisai. 
Mechavere Yosemem, Umetalmida Yosem Ekelem, and that is all what a yeshiva is about. What is the yeshiva about? Everybody is chai betal metoyrem, and you could learn on your own. You could learn on your own. The yeshiva is about the combination of harbe lamadati maraboisai, mechavere yoisemem, umetalmida yoisemekilam, the interaction of, of a rebbe and his talmidim. That is essential, that is fundamental, and that is the way we achieve greatness in Torah. Who said that? We find that several times in Shas. Rav Hanina Bar Choma. And in one source, it's Rebbe. So I, I have a feeling, when Rabbeinu HaKadosh passes away, he says, Shimon Beni Chacham. That's a Gemara in Ksub Eskov Gemal. Gamliel Beni Nosi. Chanina Bar Choma Yeshev Barosh. In the Medrash, we learned that Rebbe had three children, not two. His third son was named Yavitz. And he says, Shimon Beni, he's going to be the leader. He's the Chochem. Gamliel will be the Nosi. Who's going to be the Rosh Hashiva? Stranger. Not one of his family. One of his great Talmidim, Chanina Bar Choma Yeshev Barosh. And then there's an amazing story that Chanina Bar Choma says, no. Because that office is two and a half years older than me. He deserves it. So that's a, a separate shmus. And I say, why did Rebbe, of all as many Talmidim, choose Rav Hanina to be the Rosh Hashiva? Because Rav Hanina is the one that said, Teachers of Torah must appreciate their Talmidim. And if Rav Hanina said, I learned more from my Talmidim than from anywhere else, from anyone else, Rabbi says, you got to be the Rosh Hashiv. Rosh Hashiv should appreciate how much they gain and benefit from their Talmidim. So let me tell you, I benefit a great deal from my Talmidim because every time I give a shir and there are interesting ha'oras, uh, sometimes these Talmidim as well, but not enough. I want you to be more, more involved. But that is v'yechan sham yeson neged ahar b'dibak chaveirim b'pilpel atamidim. V'libi yoimari, the Rechaim doesn't say it, but that is keneged shloshes yemei ha'gabola. The last three days before Shavuos. One is v'yesu merafidim, invest all your energies, all your koyach in Talmud Torah, learn ba'asmoda, Number two is Midas Toivos, primarily Midas Anova. Number three is take advantage of the yeshiva, of your rabbeim, of your chaveirim, of your talmidim, and that is the way to grow in Torah. So my brocha to all of you, v'yoyim chag ha-shavuos, in this magnificent day, we should all be makabal ol Torah and ol malchus shamayim b'yavo. And we should be zoiche b'schus tal metoira. Shakodesh Boch Yerachem al Amo, Misha Omar, Olam Oidai, Yom El Tzor Oseinu Dai. And this terrible war should be over. And Akodesh Boch Hu should only give us days of Nachas and Simcha. And Yeshua's Anachomais, Veneskelerot Pnei Moshiach, Zedkenu, Bemeru, Vyomenu, Amen.